There is a big problem with Gohan Beast, and yes, the form is cool as fuck, and it looks beast as fuck, no pun intended, but there's still a huge problem with the power scaling of Dragon Ball Super, and that begs the question today, is Gohan Beast, this new form, an ass pull? With the most recent Dragon Ball Super manga chapter 103, there is a feat of Gohan Beast knocking Goku out of his Ultra Instinct form, and this has caused a lot of debating and complaining about Gohan's power, and yeah, it's probably an understandable to be confused about it, but is it really? I'd like today to go over statements in the manga, the Daizenshu, and feats that Gohan has achieved over the years, and from this information, I'd like to explain why Gohan's beast form is not actually as much of an ass pole as you might think. And just to get started, the first piece of evidence of that argument is that half-breed Saiyans have the most latent potential. This is first stated by Vegeta in Dragon Ball Manga Chapter 204, where Vegeta is talking to Nappa. Vegeta states, and I quote, At any rate, the battle power of Kakarot's son is unusually high, even by the standards of Saiyan children. Nappa says, maybe his reading is wrong. Vegeta says, no, it wasn't wrong. Raditz really took a large amount of damage from that brat's attack. It seems that mixing Saiyan and Earthling blood begets a powerful hybrid, end quote. Furthermore, in the Daizenshu 4, it states that Saiyan genes have an extraordinarily good compatibility with Earthling blood. Because of this, when the two races are mixed together, children with formidable power are born. Particularly, those halflings born without tails hide an exceptional battle power. There are many things they naturally master from a young age, such as ordinarily arduous transformations into a Super Saiyan, and in spite of having such an outstanding battle sense, they do not have the fondness for battle like a pure-blooded Saiyan. Instead, it seems that the violent temperament of the Saiyan has been relaxed through the Earthling blood. And yeah, I know that Gohan was born with a tail, but still, the point is, is that half-breeds have always been known to have the most latent potential, and everybody that you talk to in the Dragon Ball fandom will acknowledge that. To continue on, to explain, in the case of Gohan specifically, where he does end up passing up full-blooded Saiyajin a number of times, it is shown that a hybrid can pass a full-blood Saiyajin. That doesn't necessarily mean that they will always be more powerful, just that their nature as a hybrid generally allows them to reach higher levels of power in comparison to full-blooded Saiyajins of the same age. This is very common and something we all know. However, there are more comments throughout the series stating that Gohan has the most potential, and if he trained, Gohan can become the strongest warrior ever, even stronger than Goku. This is also supported by the guidebook Daizenshu 7. In the bio for Gohan, it states, and I quote, He's a pacifist who from the time he was little has dreamed of becoming a scholar rather than fighting. Because he is half Saiyan and half Earthling, his latent power is above average, but since he doesn't like voluntarily fighting or training, it was essential that he be trained by Piccolo and his father Goku. He potentially has wondrous power greater than Goku. End quote. So to explain, even the Daizenshu 7 guidebook is detailing that Gohan, with training, if he was able to tap into his lane power, that he would probably have a power greater than Goku's. Continuing on, to show you a few examples where Gohan's strength or potential is mentioned in the manga, let's look at manga chapter 205. Piccolo says, and I quote, that Gohan brat will be a powerful asset once he's trained. We'll need his power against the two Saiyans who will be here within the year, and only I can train him properly. Properly. That's when we first meet Gohan. Continuing on even further, in chapter 236 of the Dragon Ball manga, Goku says, and I quote, Gohan, Dad's body is messed up. I can't move anymore. You have to fight for me instead. Vegeta's power should have fallen a whole lot. Gohan says, he's strong. He's too strong. I, I can't win. And Goku says, you, you don't have to win. Just hold him off. Your power ought to be even more incredible than this. Even more. And what this shows is that Goku felt Gohan had an unusual power deep inside, even when Gohan was very young. Going further in the timeline of the series, to the Cell Saga, everyone there, the characters in the show, us, everybody, saw Gohan's potential unleashed when achieving Super Saiyan 2. Then in the Boo Saga, it is constantly thrown in their face about Gohan's potential. For example, in Chapter 444, when Gohan transforms into a Super Saiyan 2 versus Deborah, Vegeta comments, Humph! That bastard, he was far, far better when he killed Cell. It's because he slacked off in his training during peacetime. 
Vegeta further highlights this in chapter 452, stating Gohan got soft in his time of peace, but does state that he can get fierce when angry. Now let's move on to chapter 458. We have Goku saying, Ah, wait, Gohan, I have two more Sensu. You should eat one. You used up a lot of stamina earlier. Get angry, Gohan. Remember how you got angry and fought Cell and draw out all of the power that you have. If you do that, you won't lose to anyone in the entire world, not to anyone. And another statement that I'd like to bring up is from Dragon Ball Super. In Dragon Ball Super Chapter 6, when Goku and Vegeta are brainstorming what warriors to fight in the Universe 6, Universe 7 tournament, Vegeta asks Goku, What about Gohan? Honestly speaking, he's probably got the greatest dormant potential out of all of us. This is also stated in the Dragon Ball Super anime, Episode 30, where Vegeta again points out Gohan's latent potential. And I bring up all of these statements to show that Gohan's crazy potential leaps is consistent with the narrative. Since we were first introduced to Gohan, he has had crazy explosions in power. Some of the feats of Gohan that support this are when he knocked Raditz on his ass as a baby, when his emotions flared, his powers increased dramatically. Same thing happened to second form Frieza, when he put a hole in Krillin's chest with his horn. Gohan snaps and starts beating down second form Frieza, who at this point is stated to be at a power level of over 1 million and destroying the Z Warriors, mind you, in this time. Let's look at what Vegeta says about Gohan snapping against for second form Frieza. So, in chapter 297, after Gohan snaps because Krillin got stabbed by Frieza, Vegeta says, and I quote, Unbelievable, that brat. So he can draw out this much power when he goes into a frenzy and loses his reason? Don't tell me that he's the one closest to Super Saiyan. Continuing on, as we all know, Mastered Super Saiyan Gohan was above Mastered Super Saiyan Goku in the Cell games. Then after getting angry with Cell, Gohan's power explodes and he achieves the Super Saiyan 2 transformation or Super Saiyan Grade 5 with a rage boost. Literally with only less than one year of training, he bypasses Vegeta, Piccolo, Trunks, and Goku in power. And after transforming, he obviously way bypasses Perfect Cell by a lot, like a lot a lot. Now this same theme is still present in the Boo Saga. Gohan, who is at a Deborah slash Perfect Cell power level, which is weaker than when he was a kid, does the Elder Kai's ritual training, unlocking his ultimate form, and bypasses not only Super Saiyan 3 Goku, but also Majin Vegeta, Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks, and Super Boo. The huge power up is from all of Gohan's lane potential at that time being unlocked. Now, continuing on to Super, since there are two continuities, I will highlight both. First of all, in the anime, before the Tournament of Power, and after training with Piccolo for a day or two, possibly even just hours, Ultimate Gohan gets on Super Saiyan Blue level. Yes, Super Saiyan Blue level, you heard it right. It isn't until Goku uses the Kaioken on top of his blue form that Gohan loses. In the manga, we don't see this fight actually take place, but we do see Gohan fighting evenly with the fusion of Kale and Khalifa, Kefla. And Kale by herself is relatively close to Super Saiyan Blue power. And in fact, we see this when she is able to knock back a Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta and a Topo in manga chapter 68 of Dragon Ball Super. And just think about that. Going from a Deborah perfect cell power level all the way past Super Boo, and then even later in Super, he goes from that power level all the way to Super Saiyan Blue Goku's power level. After Super Saiyan Blue has already been established for two arcs at that time before the Tournament of Power, that's crazy. But as crazy as it is, it's 100% true. It's what happened. It's what we see. Gohan was in fact able to keep up with Super Saiyan Blue Goku. Continuing on, now finally we need to discuss the events of the Superhero Arc along with the Gohan Beast transformation itself. When the Superhero Arc is taking place, it is stated by Piccolo that Gamma 1 and Gamma 2 are approximately on the same level as Goku and Vegeta. This is stated in both the manga and the anime. It is safe to presume that he means Super Saiyan Blue level and this is why. In the anime, like I said before, Ultimate Gohan was keeping up with Super Saiyan Blue Goku right before the Tournament of Power. And in the Super Hero arc, Gohan was about even with the Gammas in his ultimate form. Therefore, he is already in the power range of Super Saiyan God and Super Saiyan Blue. 
Then when he snaps, his power unleashes his beast form. And just like shown in this video and in the series multiple times, when Gohan snaps, he what? What does he do? He bypasses everyone in strength. And it's not like he was at the power level that he was in the Buu Saga. And this is literally shown and proven by the feat of Gohan fighting Goku and the Gammas and Gohan showcasing that he is already in Super Saiyan Blue power range as Ultimate Gohan. Now, stack a rage boosted new transformation on top of that it pretty much makes sense as to why he's on Goku's level, even with Ultra Instinct. Looking at the most recent Dragon Ball Super Manga Chapter 103, Goku and Gohan are fighting evenly, but they are also not trying to kill each other. And at first, Gohan isn't really able to hit Goku. That is until Gohan raises his key right before the point of losing control or snapping, and that's when he knocks Goku out of his Ultra Instinct form. But this does not mean that he's necessarily stronger than Goku. I personally think that Gohan Beast is is stronger than Goku and Ultra Instinct, but it's still up to interpretation. We don't have enough information, statements, or feats in general to really come up with a conclusive answer. Now, there are statements by Whis that claim that Gohan might be the strongest, but me personally, I think that Black Frieza is even stronger. But regardless, nothing is confirmed as far as who is actually stronger. To continue on about the fight between Goku and Gohan, if it was a fight to the death, even though I think Gohan is stronger, I still believe Goku would win based on his battle history and experience but that's a video for another day the fact of the matter is that it is not an ass pull to have gohan and his new beast form be relative to ultra ego vegeta broly and ultra instant goku and again this is due to the narrative since the beginning of gohan's story always showing and detailing to us how gohan could be the strongest warrior ever if he trained and tapped into his true potential. And not only the narrative, but Gohan's feats alone showcase how he could bypass everybody in power when he unlocks his true potential. All of this information even aligns with what Akira Toriyama said at the release of Dragon Ball Super Superhero. Toriyama states, and I quote, Gohan is actually stronger than anyone, or so it's said. And I know all of you probably know this quote, and no, he's not saying flat out point blank that Gohan is stronger than everyone else, but his words literally extrapolate from what the entire Dragon Ball Z series and Super series is telling us. And what it tells us is that Gohan has the most potential to be the strongest warrior. And I know it sounds like I'm hitting you guys over the head with that, but it's 100% true. It's in the story, it's in the guidebooks, it's in the feats of Gohan. And so, with that being said, in conclusion, Gohan Beast is not an ass pull. While I may understand some people's frustrations, because realistically, Goku and Vegeta should be leaps and bounds above everyone besides the gods and angels, and Dragon Ball Super's power scaling is wonky, I still though wanted to make this video to make an argument for the side that Gohan Beast is not a problem and not an ass pull. Everyone, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts on whether Gohan Beast is out of left field or if he's not. Also, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. I really would appreciate the support. And last but not least, I just want to remind you to be like Gohan in the sense of not giving up and evolving as a person. Be confident, but don't be arrogant and unleash your true potential, and most importantly, never give up. I'll see y'all next time. Peace!